Some of the most striking paintings I've ever seen are images where the subject is wrapped in a halo of light. This effect, called backlighting, occurs when the sun or light source is sitting behind the subject from the viewer's perspective. The person, animal, or thing is completely in shadow, except for those hints of light peeking around the edges, making it look like it's glowing. So, how do you achieve this effect with something furry like a horse in watercolor? Here are five easy steps to help you get an awesome, angelic glow in your watercolor paintings. Number one, do a light but accurate sketch. Because of the nature of watercolor, you do have to carefully plan ahead for where your rim light will go, so it's important to start with an accurate sketch. I usually try to put down marks only where dark areas of paint will go, such as where the background will stand out against the white mane, details like the eyes and the nose, and the dark separations in the mane. Number two, leave the paper dry in the areas of light. In watercolor, the best way to make your painting look like it's glowing is to preserve the white of the paper, leaving this as the lightest area in value. When you paint with darker values all around these bright white highlights, the white of the paper can almost feel blindingly bright. I like to use the wet and wet technique, which is when you apply wet paint to wet paper for the base washes of color on the horse. In my initial wash with water, however, I leave the paper completely dry where the light is brightest on the mane and around the outer edges of the head. This will protect those areas so that the paint won't accidentally seep into them. You can also use masking fluid to protect the paper if you prefer that method. Check out this video if you want to learn more about using masking fluid. Number three, exaggerate the colors. Once I've wet the paper all over, except in those areas of white, I drop in some brilliant blues and yellows. Really look for those warm and cool colors in your reference photo and don't be afraid to play them up. Making your colors a little more vibrant than in the reference photo can give your viewer a greater sense of colorful luminosity. Before we go to the next part of the video, I just want to let you guys know that this tutorial is available in real time. Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can access all of my fully narrated real time tutorials for just a small amount per month. I also include a sketch and reference photo with those tutorials as well as a list of all the supplies I use so that you can follow the exact steps to paint along with me. With the Fearless Artist membership, you have access to my watercolor jumpstart video course which is the perfect place to start if you're brand new to watercolor. There's also a series of 20 minute tutorials that will help sharpen your skills and give you delightful frame worthy little wins in your watercolor journey. And join our private Facebook group where you can share all of your amazing artwork and get feedback from other artists. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can see all the tutorials that are currently available and I'm adding more every month. All right, let's get back to the video. Number four, paint the background wet on dry. To create a stark contrast between the halo of backlit mane fur and the dark green background, I paint the background colors wet on dry. When you paint with wet paint on dry paper, your paint will stay exactly where you put it. This ensures that you can use crisp, skinny lines to negative paint around the bright white mane. Where I paint around the details of the head, I work really slowly so that I don't accidentally paint over any of those areas, but once my outline is created, I do need to work fast to blend out the color around the background so that no hard edges form. Once your background is in, the backlit mane will instantly look like it's glowing. Number five, darken your values and finish the details. Add more color and detail here, but don't go too dark in the shadows. Even though your subject is lit from behind, a hint of bounced light from your foreground can actually contribute to the sense of the scene being bathed in light. So save your darkest values for details like the eyes and the nose. Add those dark streaks separating the mane and add soft washes to the face and body. Keep the areas of the body approaching the light more yellow in color temperature and this will contribute to that fiery glow. In my reference photo, the areas of darkest value are the eyes and muzzle. Once you add those details, the whole painting will really come together and look realistic. If you guys found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here and check out these other videos with more tips and tricks for creating realistic watercolor paintings. I'll see you there.